Uh, Liverpool's need for a centre-back was highlighted once again last night, but will they enter the market? Anton and Michael will be discussing that uh, there alongside me. Good morning to you both. Uh, and what does the future hold for Christian Eriksen? Could he be on his way back to the Premier League? Now, we'd love to hear from you at home. As always, get involved using the hashtag transfer talk. Uh, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer also on the way. Uh, but let's start first with Liverpool, shall we? They lost at Southampton last night. And Jamie Carragher says the club need to sign a centre-back this month. Uh, let's have a listen to what he said on the Monday Night Football. I can't see Liverpool winning the league if they don't bring a centre-back. And I said that on the back of Everton... Uh, v Liverpool when Van Dijk was out thought it would be very difficult I still think Liverpool have enough quality to sort of really go for the title if they don't bring someone in but I just think it's a really tough ask if they don't bring anyone in Well Anton I think Carragher was pretty clear there um, about what Liverpool need Yeah and in fairness Jess Jamie's been pretty consistent on this issue on Monday Night Football since the injury to Virgil van Dijk in October he said Liverpool have to be in a position obviously to have a centre back in their squad on January 2nd, as soon as the window opened, and that obviously hasn't happened. So let's contextualise this. It's interesting, Liverpool, they only started the season with three senior centre-backs. The injury to Virgil van Dijk, obviously, it's unfortunate, but Gomez and Matip, they've had their problems with injuries before, and obviously, perhaps it was an oversight not replacing Dejan Lovren in the summer. And Nat Phillips was not in the plans and was close to the championship move in the summer. Rhys Williams has been jumping between the seniors in the under-23s before his move to the senior squad because of all this. But look, this isn't a reactionary thought to last night's defeat and Jordan Henderson playing a centre-back. This has been a little bit brewing, hasn't it? And it's been obviously a lot of unfortunate um, circumstances for Liverpool. But at the same time, perhaps, perhaps, they could have been, perhaps this could have been foreseen with such a condensed season. Mm. So it seems then, Michael, Jamie was obviously worried before uh, about uh, uh, Virgil van Dijk's injury. He's still worried now about that position. Should Liverpool be worried? Well, when Jamie's worried, I'd say so. <laughs> <laughs> the, the key line in his interview a few months ago was to be ready at the start of January. And that doesn't look to be the case as it stands. I mean, the stance after van Dijk's injury was, we'll be fine. But it's clearly a concern now. Um, the positive news, of course, on, for Van Dijk is recovery looks to be going well, um, but still no return day. And let's be honest, we've, there's plenty of league games to come. The FA Cup gets underway in a few days. And, of course, the resumption of the Champions League. What interested me, though, last night was Jurgen Klopp highlighting that this defeat was a poor performance. He doesn't usually say that. Um, his club captain, so influential in the middle, uh, Jordan Henderson, the latest to move to the back. So few issues at the moment for Liverpool. Yeah, you mentioned Henderson there. Uh, and Anton, what we're seeing is Liverpool's club captain and one of their best midfielders, long been their leader on the pitch, having to play out of position. Yeah, look, you've got to remember Jordan Henderson was the rightest player of the season last year. He was crucial to the fantastic Liverpool campaign. But also, look, not having Fabinho, so important, arguably the best defensive midfielder in the Premier League, makes a huge difference in not playing in the centre of the park. Look, Liverpool should be playing with any three of what Fabinho, Henderson, Wijnaldum, Curtis Jones or Thiago Alcantara in there. So, but at the moment, they've had to sacrifice two of those to play at the back. So, But also for me, it's fascinating at the other end of the pitch. Jamie Carragher also said, look, it's the... It's the creativity that Liverpool are struggling with at the moment. And look, set pieces are so important at the moment. Look, it eases the pressure when you are struggling creativity. Virgil van Dijk scored five goals in the Premier League last season. That's more than any other defender in the competition. He scored four this season before. What Liverpool would do for that commanding presence up top as well to just ease the pressure on the front three? Well, maybe, you know, what we're seeing here is just how important Virgil van Dijk was as a player. Let's have a look at his stats. Um, and, you know, they're so, so impressive. Uh, with Virgil van Dijk in their side, Liverpool um, have won 35 games. Without him, six. I mean, you just look at that there. The win percentage goes right down with him out of the squad. 50% it drops to. We love a with and without graphic, don't we? And certainly when the results are clear, the answers are clear. Look at the points per game, as you say, the win percentage and the goals conceded per game um, as well. You look at them. I mean, Anton, we love a with and without stat here. But if you look at, if you look at that... But the amount of games, that's the only thing you do have to look at as well with the with or without. Yeah, and also, look, I mean, the points per game, isn't it? That's going to be crucial because they're so tight at the top of the Premier League between, what, the top seven pretty much at the moment. So any, any kind of dip in the points per game could, could be crucial, even if it's just over the next few weeks.